question often comes up, what should a person put in the system and the user boxes? And it was asked again yesterday, specifically in regards to Pseudorite's plugins. And since they work the same, I'm going to address both in the same video. You're going to hear me repeat myself a few different ways because I want everyone to fully understand by the end of this video, I want y'all to know how to use both boxes correctly. First thing I want you to understand is the answer is actually in the name. So we have the system box and the user box. The system box. How do you want the system to act? What do you want the system to do? How do you want the system to format things? Everything that is a steady state instruction should go here in the system box. Information you want to constantly reference should go here in the system box. Your user box is additional information or instructions. These instructions here will be things that vary. So maybe you want it to start off doing one thing. Then a couple of chats later, you want it to do something else. Again, these are variables, whereas all of this information over here on the left is still steady state. It is still constantly looking at that and following your instructions there. Let's look at a couple of examples here. So let's say you're writing a chapter here in Playground. Over here in the system, I could be telling it, you're going to write this chapter. This is how I want you to do it. Instead of all this character setting information, I could have writing style. I could have my story beats or my chapter beats. All of that, I am going to want it to constantly reference while it's writing. So look at it this way. I have my characters over here. I have my writing style. Yes, that's not there. We're pretending. I have my writing style, my character information, my settings. And then over here, I could tell it, okay, start writing chapter one. I could give it the story beat, or I could have all of my story beats for chapter one over here. That's some ways you can vary things up. It is able to be tailored like that. Once it's done writing chapter one, I could tell it to start with chapter two. Maybe I need to change up some information over here so that it writes chapter two consistently because it might take me a couple of prompts to actually get through chapter two. But again, as long as it has all of the instructions, what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to format things, the way it's supposed to do all of that right here, I don't have to repeat myself. I don't have to constantly tell it who the minor characters are, what the settings look like, anything like that. The same goes for Pseudorite plugins. So your system box should be your instructions. What are you wanting this plugin to do? Your user information will be, what do you want this plugin to look at? This is the variables. And I said it before, I will say it again. It bugs me that the instructions by default end up down here in the user box. When you create a plugin, you are creating it to do that thing consistently. It is a steady state instruction. And where do steady state instructions go? They go in the system box. What you want the plugin to do, how you want the plugin to act, how you want output formatted, all of that should be in your system box. This information here in the user is variables. You can't control if somebody has characters in their box or how many characters or anything like that. If I were to take the genre and style command right here and put it up here in my instructions and say, hey, look at the genre, look at the style, do this, it could throw an error depending on my wording because if there's nothing present in that genre and style box, but I've told it up here in the instructions, you definitely need this. Well, it's going to throw an error. Hey, that stuff isn't present. I can't do anything now. That's why this is variables. Yes, my plugin looks at this but it is up to the user to decide whether or not it actually uses that information or what kind of information it uses. So maybe for style in this particular plugin, I have it looking heavily at style. Maybe they got the right in first person past tense. Maybe they just got that they want a lot of curse words. That is up to them. So this is all varying information, all variables. And as I mentioned, I do have the style in here to reference. That's something you can do. This is ways when we say it can be tailored a little bit. This is what we mean. So I'm telling it, hey, the beat should be written in the style. Even though I had it referenced in that variable information, it wasn't pulling it in strong enough and consistently. Listen, it wasn't pulling it in consistently. That is why 
I put it in the system instructions. So now it should consistently look at the style. The Mixtro plugin version of this plugin, guess what? I can't control that. If you've played with Mixtro enough, you know it's anything but consistent. That is some ways you can change it up. Again, your system is steady state instructions, things you wanted to always look at, always reference, always do. That should be in your system box. Let's look at Snowflake Method. So this is just some formatting. I'm telling it, you're going to do the Snowflake Method for me. This is the way you're going to output various things. And all I need to do is give it whatever varying information, my story premise, my characters, things like that. And it'll output. I never have to remind it, hey, you're supposed to be doing it this way. It is going to give it to me like that because it is in my system prompt. Another way to look at this for Sudorite users. Guess what? All of your boxes here, these are user boxes. Whenever you generate synopsis, it doesn't just magically take everything from brain dump and turn it into a synopsis. It has a system prompt on the back end telling it, hey, look at the brain dump, look at the genre, do this. You hit that generate synopsis button and it looks at that system prompt and does what it is told to do. That is something consistent. Whenever you generate your characters, you consistently get an output format. Same thing with beats. Clicking this generate beats button is the same thing as me clicking this submit button down here. Didn't even have to give it any information. I've told instructions over here. So it's just going to make some stuff up to do what it was told to do. And that is what's happened when you click this generate beats button. You click this behind the behind scenes. What you don't see is that system prompt telling it, look at the brain dump, look at the genre, style, synopsis, characters, and outline, generate beats. Obviously, I don't know Sudorite's wording. I'm sure it's very much more complex than that. But we know when we click that generate beats button, we are consistently going to get 12 to 15 beats. Yet we didn't tell the system that. That is part of the prompting. So you, the user, are inputting information. You filled in the brain dump. You filled in all of those other boxes. You were using the user box and giving that varying information, all of the variables, for it to take into account. So that when you click that generate beats button, generate synopsis, generate outline, it references its system prompt. What do I need to do now? This button was clicked. Okay, I need to go look here and I need to do this. That is the way to look at the plugins and working inside Playground. Again, system, all of your steady state instructions, how you want it to act what you want it to do, any formatting you want it to have. If you're writing your story, you know, have your writing style, characters to reference, anything like that. That's why you see people using their story brief information and they just change that up from chapter to chapter as needed. So hopefully this helps y'all understand a little bit more. If not, always feel free to leave a comment, ask a question, or reach out to me in Discord. Thank you all for watching. Bye everyone.